This is Auto House Hamilton TV and I'm James. In the last video we looked at what the IMS bearing is and talked about why it's a cause for concern for the owners of 986 and 996 series cars. In this video we'll be looking at the statistics around managing this particular frailty. It's worth bearing in mind that cars have always had Achilles heels but what's changed recently is that the internet lets people share horror stories. Tales of woe get told, but tales of uneventful ownership don't get the same level of attention. Nobody really knows the failure rate for IMS bearings. When the problem first emerged with cars under warranty, Porsche will have known, but they weren't telling. They took a lot of flack for keeping a poker face about the issue, but, in my opinion, it was the right thing to do. Because if their public standpoint had been anything other than, we build great cars, we would have seen something analogous to a run on the banks and the situation would have been far worse than it ever was or is. Worse for Porsche as a manufacturer and worse for the owners of their cars. For the purpose of this exercise we'll start with an assumed failure rate of 10% which is almost certainly an overstatement but it makes for easy arithmetic in what I'm about to discuss. And what I'm about to discuss is this. What is a rational approach to dealing with IMS bearing worries? I'll use approximate numbers for the costs involved. These aren't to be taken as quotes or professional estimates, merely numbers to illustrate a point. And now a disclaimer. The advice provided in this video is general advice only. It has been prepared without taking into account your objectives, mechanical situation or needs. Before acting on this advice, you should consider the appropriateness of the advice having regard to your own objectives, mechanical situation and needs. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. The value of sports cars can go down as well as up, but they do look better than share portfolios parked outside your house. Now, without 10% failure rate in mind and the expectation that an IMS bearing failure leads to an engine replacement, let's assemble a hypothetical fleet of 10 potentially vulnerable cars. We'd predict that one of them would suffer an IMS bearing failure because we've multiplied the failure rate of 10% by the number of vehicles, 10, to arrive at one failure. So if we do nothing but cross our fingers and hope for the best, statistically we'd expect to be in for one replacement engine, and that would cost around $25,000. If we spread that over the fleet of cars, the cost per car works out at $2,500. How does that stack up against replacing the IMS as part of a clutch change? Well, if you're already doing a clutch change, then the IMS bearing replacement with an uprated aftermarket bearing will add a little less than $2,000 per car. Multiply that by 10 cars and you can see that with an assumed failure rate of 10% it makes rational, economic, risk-averse sense to replace the IMS bearing in each of our make-believe cars. Now let's see what happens if we change some of our assumptions. It's okay, I studied economics so I'm well qualified to make assumptions and you're in safe hands. Double the fleet to 20, to keep the sum simple, and halve the failure rate to 5%, and we restart the exercise. We'd still expect one failure, remember we have twice as many cars now, and the cost spread over the fleet now works out at $1,250 per car, because we spread the $25,000 cost of a replacement engine over a fleet of 20 vehicles. At a failure rate of 5% from cold hard analysis of the numbers, it no longer makes sense to do an IMS bearing replacement. There are two big caveats to this. First, there is that $25,000 price tag on a replacement engine. Car sales today shows 55 Boxsters at $25,000 and below, and 996 Carreras starting to get into the low 30s. A $25,000 repair bill is simply uneconomical. A gamble on IMS failure morphs into gambling the value of the car or more. The larger the fleet under consideration, the more useful the statistics become as a guide. That's because the larger the sample size, the more likely it becomes that what we see reflects the probabilities. Toss a coin three times and you could well see heads come up three times. But toss a coin 300 times and you'd expect to see around 150 heads and 150 tails. So, if we change the terms in which we view the transaction, it becomes a fee to safeguard the value of the car and makes a little more sense. And, back to the economics, there is a rational economic argument 
for doing things that a statistician sees no sense in, like playing the lottery. Statisticians view the lottery as a poor investment, but economists, predict practitioners of the dismal science, turn out to be less gloomy than statisticians. To an economist, one of the ways in which playing the lottery is rational is that there is an asymmetry between the cost, buying a ticket is very cheap, and the remote but fantastic prospect of winning bazillions of dollars. Spending a few dollars on a lotto ticket won't make you measurably poorer, but winning will make you distinctly richer, and people like to dream. And there is a similar asymmetry involved in replacing an IMS bearing. You're taking a relatively small financial sting now to avoid a potentially much worse one in the future. And it's one less thing to worry about. To close, I just want to restate the numbers that I've thrown around in this video are purely illustrative. I don't claim any special insight into failure rates, and the costs mentioned are nothing more than illustrative. As ever, thank you very much for watching.